Good evening. Welcome to my office and the week one overview video for research methods. Let's go ahead and start by praying. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us this day. Lord, thank you for giving us this opportunity at life, this opportunity to experience all the things we experienced, good and bad. Thank you for giving us all the lessons that you've given us today. Lord, help us every day realize that we are not perfect and you died for us. And through that sacrifice and the forgiveness of sins, you come into us. It's no longer us, but you who lives with in us. And, and we still won't be perfect, but more and more every day we will strive to be more and more like you, to conform to your image. Lord, give us, give us the wisdom to turn to you every day and ask you, Lord, why did you give me life? The wisdom to ask, Lord, why did you put me in this research methods class? We know that you do everything for a reason. And we so humbly get on our knees and bow our heads and submit to you. Lord, we dedicate this time to you. Not just this lecture video, but the entire term. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we pray. Amen. Okay, cool. Let's go ahead and see what we're doing in this class. So give me one second as I share the screen. Okay, share. Perfect. Okay, we can start by uh, going to the top. Here's all the course information. I'm not going to go over everything, so feel free to thumb through it. Uh, but I will uh, take a look at uh, some big picture things. There's a required textbook. Uh, please acquire it as soon as possible. It's easily picked up online. That may be a good way to go. Sometimes the online books have a feature where they are read to you, which is really nice if you have a commute. Okay. Do I mention my office hours here? I do. Okay, I have office hour, and this is an asynchronous class, so we don't have a mandatory Zoom meeting. Okay, but what we do have, we have non-mandatory office hours, Tuesdays, sorry, Thursdays from 6 to 8 p.m. And again, it may differ when you're taking this class. Okay. So the following assignments are due week one, uh, Sunday by 11.59 uh, p.m. Okay. And these are noted here. Okay. So here's your welcome letter. So definitely take a look at the welcome letter. Okay. Oh, there's another reason I clicked on the welcome letter to look at the syllabus. So let's take a look at the syllabus. Okay, so definitely go ahead and read through it. Uh, my name is uh, Mark D. Kinnon, a PhD. I received my PhD in social personality psychology from the University of California, Riverside in 2012. I have worked as a statistical analyst and now senior statistical analyst for approximately 13 years uh, for a county government agency. I have also been teaching for many years. I know it's over a hundred and something classes, but yes, I've taught as uh, adjunct and senior adjunct professors at various uh, institutions of learning. And I was a half-time assistant professor at APU for about six years, but now I'm a senior adjunct professor. So that's just a little bit about me career-wise. Again, my office hours are Thursdays from 6 to 8 p.m. This is just a copy of the welcome letter. What I really want to focus on are the components of the class. And really, this course is broken up into 
three prongs, as I like to call them. The first prong is research method theory. Okay. So there's a, a lot to talk about regarding research methods and data analysis that's covered in your textbook. Okay, so by you reading the textbook and taking the quizzes, which is actually the first assignment displayed here, you're going to get that research method theory. The second portion of the class is <clears throat> data analysis understanding. We could call it that. I call it something different in my modules, but that's what's coming to mind right now. And you're going to get that through your SPSS notes. So you're not going to be required to have SPSS per se, okay? All you'll be required to do is to read my lecture notes and or watch my lecture videos where I use SPSS uh, to run various analyses and I interpret the analyses. So what's going to be important for you to focus on here are the interpretations. Okay, so that's the second prong of the class. And by focusing and, and kind of having this uh, review, if you will, of data analysis and focusing on the interpretations, that's going to help you as you read various journal articles in this class that you're required to find. It's also going to help you when we write the research paper in order to better understand the results you're getting and, and to better be able to provide an appropriate interpretation. And of course, I'm gonna work with you the entire time. So, and the third, the third component is actually writing the research paper. So first component, you have eight quizzes covering uh, research method theory. So that's 30% of your total grade. And then you have your SPSS notes, which are only 5% of your total grade, okay? And then, your final paper is actually worth a lot, okay? So prong three of this course is writing a research paper. We'll just put it at that. And basically, this course is designed in a pretty cool way because you're going to write a little bit of the research paper every single week by completing your discussions, okay? And then submitting research paper rough drafts. Okay, so that's it. That's the that's the breakdown. And if we go back to the module section and take a look under overview of assignments, okay, just lists, you know, eight quizzes, five, you know, basically what we just looked at, but they're all there for you. They're all linked. So that's kind of a nice little overview feature. Now, what I want to do is I want to take a look at week one material. Okay, so I'll click on this. Uh, I was just talking about this, right? So prong one, research method theory, prong two, SPSS or data analysis, prong three, we're actually writing the research paper. Okay, so let's look at week one, part one. Make sure you head on over to uh, well, when you click on week one, part one, you could click on this week one multimedia link and you will see I linked a worship video. This is something I really uh, believe in, especially when I'm teaching in person or synchronously, but I wanted to provide this opportunity. So what I encourage you to do before you begin, just watch this worship video, kind of send yourself, realize that God put you here for a reason and just uh, reflect on your relationship with God and just center yourself and prepare to just focus on this course material because we're all so busy uh, that sometimes life can just be so uh, confusing and impossible. But take this moment to just kind of get that one point of focus, which is this class, okay? Reflect on your relationship with God. Be thankful for what you've been given in your life and then move on from there. So I will post this video that I'm filming right now under week one multimedia as well. So you click here, you'll find this uh, video. So we we went over the syllabus, okay. Now I wanna cover the research process. So the research process is actually quite a simple process, okay. 
you start with a motivating interest. You're in order to be a researcher, you have to be interested in a topic. You have to be interested in doing research on a topic. Otherwise, why are you a researcher? Okay. So let's say I'm I'm interested in the relationship uh, between, oh, what's a simple one? Openness to new experiences, which is a personality trait and the concept of self-esteem. So I'm really interested in that topic. So I'm motivated. <laughs> the next step is to understand previous work that's been done in the area. So how do I do that? I go to the library uh, the, <laughs> the library website or any sort of library website where I can find uh, journal articles. And I look up all the work that researchers have done in the past regarding openness and self-esteem. So by doing this, I'm getting an understanding of previous work. At this point, I'm ready to uh, generate my own research questions and or hypotheses. So research questions are just that, they're a statement. So is there a relationship between openness and self-esteem? That would be a research question. A hypothesis are uh, more directional. So I believe that people who score high in openness will also tend to score high in self-esteem. People who score low in openness will also tend to score low in self-esteem. Okay. So that's step two of the process. And this is represented by the introduction section of a research paper, a research paper that you're going to write in this course. Okay, the third step is to design a study and collect data. Okay. <clears throat> So once you come up with your hypotheses and or research questions related to openness and self-esteem, for example, it's now time for you to design a study. So it could be a survey, it could be a focus group, whatever, whatever's decided. Uh, and then you're going to collect data. This process is represented in the method section of a research paper. This being said, you're actually not going to design your own study for this class you're not going to collect your own data. And really it's because we do not have enough time. So instead we're going to pretend that you created a, a study that I did back in 2008 uh, called uh, personality and gay marriage attitudes. So not only are you going to use that study, but all the data has been collected and analyses have been done, okay? So the fourth step of the research process is to analyze the data. Once you analyze the data, you're assessing your research question and or hypotheses, okay? So there you have it. And this is represented by the results section of the research paper. Once you've analyzed the data, okay, it's now time to uh, finalize your research report, right? Because this is the last step and indicate future research needed. This is done in the discussion section of your research paper. And again, all these sections of the research paper will be the subject of this class. So once again, motivating interest, understanding previous work and coming up with hypotheses and or research questions, designing a study, collecting data, analyzing the data, writing up or finalizing the research report and indi indicating future research that's needed and this future research that's needed, that's going to motivate you to do more research on the topic, okay? Or, or research another topic altogether because you feel like this area is done. Okay, so that's the basic research process. Now, here's the study we're going to use. It's a study that I did in 2008. If you know anything about uh, politics, 2008, was a pretty big uh, election, especially in California, because it had to do with Prop 8. Uh, so that being said, this entire study is not about uh, personality and gay marriage attitudes. That's just what the study was called. There are a lot of different variables in here. For example, age, gender, sexual orientation, ethnicity, uh, religious affiliation, family income, the list goes on, how, how people the degree to which people support various political issues, 
including how they voted on same-sex marriage. There's some validated measures, including the Rosenberg self-esteem scale, including the balanced F scale, including the religious orientation scale, uh, the Big Five inventory, although we're only including openness and neuroticism. So if you know anything about the Big Five, there's actually five factors, openness, conscientiousness, agreeableness, uh, sorry, <laughs> openness, conscientiousness, extroversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism, right? Because it should spell ocean. So here we, we've included openness, not conscientiousness, not extroversion, not agreeableness. And then we've also included neuroticism. Okay, this is a measure of emotion, positive and ne negative emotion, or what's called affect. Uh, this is just a distraction task. Here's some other stuff uh, that's probably not relevant to what you'd be looking at. But this is it, that's the survey. You notice there's the date it received uh, Institutional Review Board approval from UC Riverside on December 8th, 2008, so a bit ago. So that's the study you're going to just take a quick look at, and then you're going to click on this week one, part one discussion. It says pick three variables. As discussed in lecture, jot down at least three variables from personality and gay marriage attitudes that you are interested in studying. Also, please explain why you're interested in these variables. Okay, so this should be about a 200 word response. So try to try to get there. Uh, actually, we'll just say it's a 200 word response. Okay, uh, if you're short, I'll let you know. And, and this week I'll give you an opportunity to fix it. Okay, so literally you're gonna click on that survey, look through, okay? And just pick some variables. A variable could be gender, it could be self-esteem. Uh, so uh, pick three of those that you're interested in and, and just explain why you picked those and not other variables in the data set we just looked at. Part two of this week one, part one discussion is respond to two other students. Discuss how the variables you choose relate to the variables they chose. Are there any variables they chose that you may be interested in studying? Please explain why you may be interested in these variables. Also, please let them know if something is unclear and if possible, suggest a correction. Again, each of these responses need to be 100 words each, each and you need two responses. Okay, so let's go back. Okay, so we finished. We took a look at week one introduction. We looked at week one, part one. Let's take a look at week one, part two. Uh, generating hypotheses or research questions. Okay, these are just these are just examples of hypotheses. Uh, so just you could take a look at these. I'll go over a few. Uh, remember, a research question. If we're looking, it looks like here we're looking at self esteem and gender. Okay, so we're not we're not creating research questions here, right? A research question would say, is there a relationship between self-esteem and gender? Okay, rather, we are creating uh, predictive statements, if you will, statements we can assess. So it is hypothesized that males tend to have higher self-esteem than females. Or you can hy hypothesize that females tend to have higher self-esteem uh, than males. It is hypothesized that those high in religious orientation will tend to support same-sex marriage more than those low in religious orientation. Or you could predict the other way around. But go ahead and take a look at these. They're just, I think you get it. They're just various uh, uh, statements indicating some sort of prediction that you have. And here's what I'm gonna have you do here. The week one, part two discussion. I'm going to have you create three hypotheses. So let's look at part one. So based on the variables that you identified in the 
week one, part one discussion assignment, or you can choose to pick new variables if you really want to, create at least three hypotheses. So just kind of based on the list we were just looking at, right? Also, please explain why you made the predictions that you made. Okay. So for example, uh, females tend to be liberal more than males. Males tend to be conservative more than females. Females tend to be Democrats more than males. Males tend to be Republicans more than females. Females tend to be lower in authoritarianism relative to males. For more examples, please see the following document. Okay. So there you have it. And this is the one we were actually just looking at. So go ahead and do that. And then I want you to respond to two other students. So provide feedback regarding their posted hypotheses. Let them know if they 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 look good, uh, if they sound right, okay? For example, if they put research questions, let them know, oh, you know, you're actually supposed to provide hypotheses, okay? So uh, here's an example of how you could write it. Also, please let them know if something is unclear and if possible, suggest a correction. So you need to respond to two other students. Each response should be, a hundred words each, okay? So I'm not going to be giving you feedback regarding these discussions. I'm going to thumb through them to make sure that you're doing them, you're meeting the requirements, okay? And you're getting the work done. This is your opportunity for what's called peer review. Research happens in a community. I don't do research by myself. I do research as a team, okay? For every project we meet and we talk about the project. So this is your opportunity for peer feedback, okay? Where I am going to give you a lot of feedback is when you submit the rough draft assignments. So, and we're not even there yet, but we'll get there. But when you submit the rough draft assignments, for example, the introduction, rough draft, the methods, rough draft, the results, rough draft, et cetera, I'm going to give you a lot of feedback. And if it's not up to par, I'm going to, for example, give you uh, a fraction of the points. Let's say 50% of the points. I'll explain what needs to be fixed, and then I'll tell you to revise and resubmit it for full credit. So the cool thing with this is once you have full points on a rough draft section, it means you're going to get full points on that section for the paper. OK, so that's how it works. So. By the time we get to week seven, week eight, and you're constructing your final paper, if you have full points on all the rough drafts, you'll be good. Assuming you follow the template and APA is not messed up, et cetera, but for the most part. Okay. And while we're while we're talking about that. Okay, so I covered I covered the discussions, but while we're talking about that, I want to point you to this module right here, right under office hours, right? So here's our office hours module to remind you. I will be sending you an email, by the way. But go ahead and click on this uh, template. So there's a couple paper examples. They're pretty good. Uh, they have some errors, okay, but they're pretty good. They're A's. So I've created this final paper template for you. Feel free to download it. OK. Uh, everything's in APA style. Basically, my goal is you download this template and you start putting pieces of your paper in it over time. You're not really going to be doing this this week. Actually, you're not going to be doing it this week. But as you can see, I go through all the sections. We haven't talked about the abstract yet but I indicate the assignment that's associated with a particular section. So just keep this in mind. I'm literally not going to go over this right now because uh, we haven't even talked about any of these sections yet, but just keep it in mind. It's very helpful. Okay, so we talked about our week one discussions. There's a quiz, again, it's covering uh, topics from the textbook. This textbook is nice. It's broken into topics, right? So instead of having huge chapters, 
there might be, uh, you know, 11 topics in this case, they might be a uh, uh, one um, or a few pages each, but they're not like super long. So I like it that way. You, you're essentially reading uh, a chunk at a time, taking the quiz. And these quizzes are, let's see, there's no time limit and you get two submissions. So just keep that in mind. If you have any questions, definitely shoot me an email. I'm happy to help. So then we have our prong two, right? The SPSS assignment. So literally what you're going to do here is you're going to download this uh, blank file. Okay, I could click on it for you. So you're gonna download this blank file. Okay. And it's going to correspond to the SPSS1 lecture video. And that's housed under the multimedia tab. So if you click there, it'll take you there. And these are the lecture notes. So this is important. Take notes on just the interpretations. You are not going to use SPSS. Okay. So the point, again, is not for you to use SPSS. I want you to focus on the interpretations and try to remember what you learned in statistics and data analysis because understanding interpretations will help you as you grab research articles from the library website and try to understand what they found, you know, when you're looking at the results section, okay? And then it'll also help you when you write the results section of your final paper. So this is an example of how your notes should look. And notice here that the interpretations are just focused on, okay? I didn't include any uh, SPSS here, just the interpretations. And then week one module, I have this little reminder tab. It'll tell you all the assignments that are due, you know, your two discussions, your SPSS lecture notes and your quiz one. Uh, so, so that's a wrap for the week one overview video. Let's go ahead and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for really blessing us with all this technology so we can meet in this format. Lord, thank you for blessing us with this class and, and leading us. Lord, help us understand why we're here. Why did you put us here? You could have put us anywhere, but you put us in this class. Lord, help us cling on to the information that we need to get from this class. Help us realize that we can all learn from each other. Lord, we ask that your will is done in our lives because we know, Lord, that Satan is always knocking on the door trying to derail us and cause issues in our lives. We ask for forgiveness of our sins. And we ask for the wisdom to always remember that through you, all things are possible. We can do all things because you strengthen us. We dedicate this term to you. Lord, for all these intentions and the ones that we're all holding in our hearts, we pray to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. So that's all I have. Uh, definitely send me an email if you have any questions and or uh, drop by office hours. All right. May the peace and grace of Christ be with you. Have a great week. Bye.